Welcome back to this series on how to make a Pac-Man game using Scratch 3. In this video you are going to learn how to make a maze and how to make Pac-Man move around within that maze but stop when he hits the walls. So we've got our Pac-Man made and now we need to get on with creating the maze. So we are going to uh, go to a new sprite and we're going to paint and immediately I'm going to name my sprite maze. And for now, we're just going to have a single maze, so we don't need to create any new costumes. Um, but we do want to obviously draw the maze itself. So to do that, we're going to work in vector mode, which is what you get by default. We don't have to click this button. We're going to stay in vector mode. And we're going to use the rectangle tool. With this tool, we are just going to draw a series of rectangles, and then we're going to draw the lines between them to create the maze. So our rectangles do not need a fill, so we can click on fill and then choose the uh, transparent button but we do want an outline color and I'm kind of choosing this sort of blue color and you'll want to set a thickness to probably I've chosen 15 um, it's up to you you can try a different thickness um, but then all you need to do uh, because we're using the rectangle tool is click in the corner and drag a rectangle out and that will create really straight lines for our maze and you'll notice it seems a bit off center until you set the x value here for your maze to zero and the y value to zero and once you've done that it will start drawing in the right place so you next want to draw um, another rectangle so you can put that wherever you like try to keep it a consistent thickness all around but because we're working in vector mode we can actually adjust these later if we need to so if you've made it a bit too close on one side you can use the little drag handles to resize and we're going to do another one of those and another one of those okay and at this point you might think well hang on my pac-man doesn't fit in that wall so you've got two options one you could go back and you could resize these rectangles to make them fit or you could change the size of your Pac-Man to make him a bit smaller within the maze, which is my personal preference. So if you click on your Pac-Man sprite and where you've got the size, try making that a bit smaller, maybe 10. And although it looks quite small now, if we make that full screen, that's actually a perfectly reasonable size for our Pac-Man character and he fits nicely inside the maze. So let's go back to our maze. And now obviously at the moment we've just got boxes we need some walls in our maze and we need some gaps to get through as well so to do that I'm going to use the line tool and I haven't changed color so it's the same outline color and the same thickness and I can just draw lines anywhere that I want to create some walls and barriers but here's the trick if you just draw a line it might not be straight if you hold the shift key while drawing a line it will be dead straight so I'm going to do that I'm going to hold the shift key down and draw some lines um, at the moment I'm kind of doing it randomly you might want to put a bit more thought into this uh, but just draw some lines to create some divisions within your maze and once you've got your lines we also need to draw some gaps so to use to do that we're just going to use the eraser tool and we'll just create some spaces and that opens up some holes in the walls and again, you're going to need to apply a little bit of thought because you need to think, well, can my Pac-Man get everywhere? So if I started my Pac-Man here, he'd be stuck. So let's create a gap. Now we can get up here, but he'd again be stuck. So let's create a gap maybe here, perhaps. So we can come up here, go around here, you can get around here, get up here, get down here. We can't get into here, so maybe we need a gap there. Um, and you just need to sort of experiment and just make sure that you've created enough uh, space for Pac-Man to move around. Um, it's really important that our Pac-Man character doesn't appear behind our maze, uh, which might sometimes happen. So in order to make sure the maze is always in the background, I'm going to add some code. So I'm going to go to the code options and for my maze, so I've got my maze selected, I'm just going to get a when green flag is clicked button. So when green flag is clicked, I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to down here where it says go to front layer let's change that to back and drag that on so when we start the green flag send the maze to the back layer and that just means that pac-man ghosts power-ups everything else in the game will always appear in front of our um, our maze which is kind of what we want 
So I've done the maze, the maze is ready to go. I now need to add some code to my Pac-Man because at the moment my Pac-Man is obviously animated and he can move up, down, left and right, but he's not moving anywhere. So we need to add the code to make him move, but not only to move, but also stop when he hits the walls. Otherwise, people could just go through the walls and the game would be really easy. So to do that, we are going to um, add a little bit of code in a new forever loop. So I'm going to go and get another when green flag is clicked and another forever loop. And to make Pac-Man move forwards in the direction he's pointing, we just need to grab a move uh, move 10 steps block but to be honest 10 is quite a lot of steps if we were to run that now he'd move quite quickly off the side of the screen so let's change that number to something a bit smaller maybe uh, 2 and let's see what happens now okay so he's moving along at a reasonable pace and I can change the direction of Pac-Man but he can go through the walls which is obviously something we don't really want to happen so let's fix that we need to add some code that uses that color detecting nose that we added to check that the color of the nose is not touching the color of the walls, okay? Because if it is, then uh, we want Pac-Man to stop. So to do that, I'm actually gonna make Pac-Man a bit bigger again, so maybe size 50, just so I can easily select his nose. And we're going to add, instead of always moving forwards, let's just pull that out for a second, and we're gonna say, well, let's move forward, but only if, if, uh, and then we're going to use a few blocks. We're gonna use a color block, and we're going to use, uh, sorry, a color this is touching that, and we're gonna use a not block as well, which we find under operators. So I'm gonna put that, first of all, in my if. So I'm gonna say, well, in a forever loop, if, something is not happening, then I want to move forward. And the thing that I that we should be checking for, the thing that's not happening, is that the color of the nose is touching the wall. So we will only move forward if the color of the nose is not touching the color of the wall. So to set these colors, it's really easy. You just click on the color block and then choose this tool for a picker. And then you just have to move your um, mouse over the color of the nose and you'll see that there's a little circle appears to confirm that color so we're going to get the first of all we're going to get the nose color and then for the next one we're going to get the wall color so now we're saying well if the nose is not touching the maze then move forward so let's make our Pac-Man small again place him inside our maze somewhere maybe just somewhere in the middle if I go full screen, let's test this and see how it works. So it goes forward until he reaches a wall, at which point he stops moving. So that's working pretty effectively. I'm quite pleased with that. Um, there's a few other things we could do just to make this a little more improved. Um, obviously, his little nose is quite visible. So we may want to um, make the color of the nose closer to the color of the background. So let's have a go at that. What I'm going to do now is go to my stage backdrops. And instead of it being white, if I just go to my backdrop, I'm actually going to choose uh, black. I'm going to make it a black background, make it look a bit more like the original Pac-Man. So I use my fill tool and I just click. And now I've got a black background. So already that looks a bit more like Pac-Man. But obviously this little orange dot is still quite obvious. And it's obvious when he's on the black and it's obvious when he's on the blue. So what if we changed our little um, nose color to something that's similar to both black and blue, maybe like a dark black or a dark blue. So for that, uh, if I change my fill color now, I'm gonna get something that's not quite black uh, and not quite blue. If I just go to the blues now, so that's a dark blue. It's very similar to my wall color. Maybe if I make it blacker, that is almost black. And to the human eye, that probably looks like black. But for the computer, it's a totally different color to the pure black that we have as the background. So with that fill color selected, I can click on the a little nose and it's now changed to a sort of black color. And if I go to uh, my other costume and do the same, so I'm using the exact same color on both. I now obviously need to change my code for this to work. So I'm gonna make Pac-Man big again. This time I'm gonna make him full size. And you can just see his nose there. So let's go back to our code. 
and change the nose color from orange to our new dark blue. Put Pac-Man back to being 10%. And now, when we play the game, it's far less obvious. I mean, when he's against the back, black background, you barely notice it at all. When it's over the blue, yeah, you can see it a little bit, but I think we can forgive that. And I don't think most people, when they're playing the game and they're focused on the um, all the enemies and the dots they're collecting, I don't think most people would notice that. So that's all you need to do to create a maze and make Pac-Man move around within your maze.